They've been asking me about game rooms. What's the deal with game rooms? How come game rooms are open if they're illegal? People off island people telling me what's the big deal about game rooms? How come I hear about what's a game room? Of course, everybody in Hawaii knows what a game room is. Everybody's been to them or knows somebody that's been to them. They are illegal places for gambling and they're all over the place. I will leave links in the chat to my YouTube where you can see where I'm getting some of my messages from or some of my information. But basically, all I hear about game rooms is how come the game rooms are open if they're illegal? Everybody's talking about game rooms, especially right now. Recently, there was a bill that was introduced to make game room or to make casinos legal in Hawaii, but that was shut down as of recently. So would it help that's the big question Kai the Hawaiian guy what's up Kai how you doing bro thanks for coming through I am on right now on TikTok and on YouTube for those of you that are wondering where you can catch it I'm going to be basically talking about um, game rooms today and if you guys got questions, make sure you leave them in the chat and I'll try to get to them. I'm loading up the chat right now with all the information. I do want to say uh, that this live stream is brought to you by Frontline Hawaii. Frontline Hawaii hooked me up with this dope dry fit tee. Love that logo. That's such a dope logo. Shout out to Mel and John. Miss you, bro. Thanks for sending the gear. Frontline Hawaii, check that out. Bam. With us or against us. Look at that. Isn't that dope? Check this one. Shoot. Oh. That's it right there. Super dope. Miss you, bro. Thanks for sending that out. You can find them at Frontline Hawaii on Instagram. Always showing love. Always taking care. Okay, so I'm putting all the information in the chat. Everything you guys have been asking about. So you can have my references. Okay, let's get into it. Game rooms in Hawaii. I get messages all the time, Instagram, TikTok, all about game rooms. Some of you guys asking me, hey, how come game rooms are open? I thought gambling was illegal. How does that work? Have you Do you have any stories about being in the game rooms? Yes. Yes, I do. And that's basically a frustrating thing that everybody who knows about game rooms has to deal with. It's, it is what it is, man. Game rooms are out there. Yeah, they're not legal, but there's nothing you could do about them. So I want to give a shout out to all my Patreons and everybody that's joining in right now on YouTube and on TikTok. Appreciate you guys. You guys are the best. We got a good team. And don't forget... We are starting the Sunny Skies Shady Characters. The book club starts on Monday. We're going to read two chapters a week. Head on over to patreon.com slash Doug Karenik. Sign up. You'll get the email. You'll start getting videos. And then make sure you order your book. There is a link for this book in the chat, in the descriptions, and all my videos. You can order them. It's like 20 bucks. Order it up. Go to Patreon. Sign up. We start on Monday. We're going to be doing lives. We're going to be doing Zoom calls. And we're going to be getting through that book together. Two chapters a week. Should take eight weeks. we got 16 chapters. I can't wait to do it. Um, it's going to be great. I think we have like two spots left 
open for this session. I'm probably going to have to do another session, but every eight weeks I'll do one, something like that, because there's a lot of demand. But I think we got two more spots. Um, so hurry up and get over there. And make sure you take care of that. That is going to be in, what, three days we start. Yeah, three days. So um, I appreciate you guys for that. Okay. Um, so here's the deal with game rooms, guys. There's 70 to 100 on Oahu. That's what HPD says right now. HPD says 70 to 100 game rooms on Oahu. That's just Oahu. So I don't know anything about Big Island. I don't know about Kauai. I don't know about Maui. Guaranteed they got game rooms in all those spots. And probably like longer lasting game rooms. Game rooms that have been around for a while. But on Oahu, there's 70 to 100. And that's per HPD. Um, that's what they told. I have a link in the description or a link in the chat right now that you can check out. 70 to 100. Small island per the Hawaii Tribune. And I've been to many game rooms. Game rooms are the spot. That's the place for action. If you're a policeman, you work Chinatown, you work town, Pearl City, Waianae, um, Makiki, Makali, Mo'ili'ili, um, Mapuna Puna, Kalihi, Waipahu. They're all over. Get game rooms on the North Shore. Get them in Wailua, Waimanalo. Kailua has game rooms. Um, Kanioe has game rooms. Game rooms are all over the place on Oahu. And it's all the same deal. You've been to one, you've been to them all. Some of them have better security. Some of them have nicer facilities. But it all is the same basic setup. I've been into game rooms because I've either been chasing dudes that ran in game rooms. That's probably the most popular way that I've been into a game room. Is because somebody dug out for me and they ran into the game room. So for those of you who are not in Hawaii, a game room is basically an illegal gambling house. Because gambling is illegal in Hawaii. You cannot gamble. What is the threshold? What does that mean? Basically, the way that Hawaii looks at gambling is if you're betting or playing slots or whatever it is, whatever your typical gambling is, if the house takes a cut, then that's illegal. Now, your typical, like, Typical house games where you're just playing at somebody's house, playing poker or whatever, it's all good. It's as soon as the house takes a cut. So if you buy in, everybody buys in 100, there's 10 people, that's $1,000. And the prize money's 500, the house takes 500, that's illegal. And in Hawaii, um, that happens all over the place. There's even, there's even like gambling houses that are not considered game rooms per se in Hawaii. A good example of that is Chinatown. Chinatown, they're all over the place. Chinatown is like, it's just all over the place. You'll see the, my favorite thing is when I would be like, I work daytime or I'd work third watch, which is like nights, afternoons into nights. They get off around midnight. Or if you work daytime and you're, if you know what Chinatown's like, if you're heading, um, Eva down Baratania and you turn down River Street. Now there's like a mall there. And in that mall, police can drive. No one else can really drive. But we would always check those spots right on the river, right by New Uonu. And I can't tell you how many times you go out there. If you go out there any day of the week, you're going to see a hundred dudes, hundred Chinese dudes, they playing mahjong. And they're playing all their games that they like to play. And you'll find like people playing Pepito and Kalihi and Waipahu and stuff like that. But you pull up and there's like hundreds of people standing around those little tables, basically. With little mahjong boards on them. And everybody's money up in the air, throwing money down. Like, there's gambling everywhere, and everybody knows about the gambling. But like I said, if the house doesn't take a cut, technically there's nothing anybody can do about it. 
So that answers the question for how come that kind of stuff can happen. But now if we're going to talk about game rooms, we know that game rooms make money. That's why they are open. So they are making money. They don't necessarily take a cut of your winnings. Like they're not taking a percentage of your winnings. But basically, there's not a there's not a solid chance that you're actually going to win at a game room. It's essentially like slots. So I think the most typical way that you would gamble at a game room is the fish game. If anybody's ever played the fish game, it's addicting, first of all. The fish game is super fun. I've played the fish game. You can go to like uh, those little game houses, like fun centers for kids. They got them at the malls. And there's usually a fish game in there. And that's basically the same fish game. So if you ever got stuck at that fish game while your kid was running around um, at one of those gaming centers, that's basically what this is. And you'll walk into a game room, there'll be five fish games. Huge. These are huge electronic fish games with beautiful glass tops. Mad expensive. These things, I don't even know how much they cost, but it's got to be like 10, 20 grand for each machine. And there'll be like five of them. They have multiple seats in a, in a circle around the fish game. So there might be four people, five people playing the fish game. And it's basically you're fishing. You're like shooting spear guns, essentially. And you got to shoot and kill the fish. And certain fish are worth are worth a certain amount of points and the bigger the fish the harder to kill the more points you win that kind of stuff so typically how game rooms work is it's not cash for cash it's not like you walk in put twenty dollars on the fish game and you play and then you get the big fish and you win twenty dollars and you go cash out your twenty dollars that's not typically how it works um, there's a reason for that. That's because that's easy to prove that it was gambling. So there's a few loopholes that the game rooms usually work on. A lot of times, um, one of the things that they do is phone cards. It's, it's like an access card. It's like a playing card where you load your phone card or game card, essentially gift card, with money. So you'll put like $20 on a phone card. And then you'll play with that phone card. And then if you win, it loads your phone card. The problem is when you cash out, you actually cashed out with cash, with money. So essentially, yeah, they have it at Chuck E. Cheese. Sammy Whammy 27 said they have it at Chuck E. Cheese. That is the same thing at the game room. So if you... If you go into this game room, a lot of times what they'll do is you'll pay for the phone card. The reason you do that is because if the cops bust you, it jam, the, the cops jam in the place and you purchase a phone card, all they did was sell you a phone card. Essentially, they're like a phone card merchant. And what they're doing is they're loading that phone card, but that's not like tangible. That's not easy to prove. You know what I mean? So that's typically how they get around that kind of stuff. And there's a hundred different ways that they do it. That's not the only way that they get around the, the game room gambling loophole. But that's, that's like a solid way that they do it. Because it's not easy for your typical beat cop to walk in and see that there's gambling. It's not like dudes throwing money down and there's a big... You know what I mean? It also helps... If they're running on on game cards because you don't got to worry about ro getting robbed during the actual play you got to worry about getting robbed when you go to cash out and there's always a cashier it's just like a casino where there is a cashier which you cash out before you leave and you might ask how have you ever seen anybody win like do you win money yes winning is that's like that actually happens dudes will win 10 grand playing for an hour at the game room. I've seen it happen before. Usually that dude gets robbed somewhere down the line. But, um, cause think about it. Now he's got all this cash and everybody knows. And he's, he's, he's essentially a criminal. Everybody in there are criminals for the most part. If you are not a criminal and you find yourself in a game room, you don't feel right. I'm telling you. I've been in there. 
and I know plenty of guys that like go to the gamer because they just want to play and they want to experience it. That happens all the time, and I get it. I want to do it too. If you know there's action behind that door, and they're playing the fish game, and there's action, you want to do it. It's like walking in a casino. It's the same deal. So you want to play, and then when you start playing, it's addicting. And then it's mad fun. And then there's like rules. There's all these little rules inside. Like if you win, you will dish out money to the people you're playing with. It's not everybody, especially like chronics that, that go in there. You know what I mean? You're just trying to like get your mortgage back because you just paid all your money. You paid all your rent. You just gambled or whatever. But if you do it right, like you can let other people play on your card. You know what I mean? So dudes can win big. And I've talked to dudes that I've arrested or people that I've been out with, like snitches. I mean, dudes that are given information. They'll tell you like, yo, I won big on the game room. Or they'll tell you, hey, so-and-so won big on the game room this week. Like that's out there. So typically a cop with his ear to the ground that actually knows his area, especially if there's game rooms like in town, they're everywhere. In town, there are so many game rooms. If I had to guess, from Punahou to Liliha, from, say, Wilder down to Alamana Beach Park, just town, there's got to be 30. There's got to be 30 game rooms. And they're all the same. Some of them are in houses. Some of them are in, like... Uh, Commercial buildings, like warehouses. And you, you guys know how it is. Like when you, down Kona Street and that whole area, you'll see there's these weird zones where there's condos, but there's also like like old auto re repair shops down by the massage parlors, Cook Street. You know, they'll be like, these weird zones where there's like restaurants, but also like a gun shop and all that stuff. So think Queen Street. You ever been down Queen Street? There used to be a spot called Docks. And Docks was on, it wasn't Kona at that point. I think it was Queen. I think Docks was on Queen. And Queen and what is that? Pensacola or P.E. Koi, one of the two. And, um, oh, shout out Reno Romero. Thank you for the $10. That's awesome, man. Appreciate the gift. Thank you, sir. Shout out to you. We had a good talk today. I appreciate you, bro. Thanks for the support. Um, yeah, so there was a, a spot called Docs. Do you guys remember Docs? Anybody remember the Docs game room? So Docs was this place that we jammed so many times. They got jammed every week, it seemed. And it all got shut down when they got in that bad accident. Do you remember? There was that bad accident with the red Corvette that slammed into the um, the tunnel on the Lique. Slammed into the side of the tunnel. And it was it. There was like... Basically, the dude who ran docks died. And then that one closed down. But that was a big one for the longest time. And usually you'll walk into these places, they got cameras. That's how you can tell. First of all, if you're walking into buildings, they got cameras on the doors. Like you, a doorman with cameras on the doors. Or sometimes they'll have like a lobby where you walk in and like there's a little spot. You got to walk in one door. Then there's another door. Somebody lets you in. You know it's sketch. And um, like you could tell those massage parlors. There's a lot of those massage parlors. There used to be one at the corner of Vineyard and Nuuanu. I think it was Vineyard and Nuuanu. Right across from the Pali Longs. And right in the corner, it was like a regular office building that had one massage parlor. But they're just normal, it's like a normal building with different suites that walk to the outside of the building. But all of a sudden you'd have one with a bunch of cameras. That was a massage parlor or a game room. It's, it's easy, it's like a dead giveaway. And especially if they got the windows closed. 
game rooms just like that. They all look the same. You've been in one, you've been in a hundred. You walk inside, it's all the it's your typical like linoleum floor, bunch of fish games, a bunch of gambling machines on the wall. And it's not so much the gambling that anybody has a problem with, to be honest with you. I could care less if I, everybody was gambling. Honestly, could care less. It wasn't the gambling. It was what happened in the game room. Dang, 22 messages. I got 22 messages on TikTok. I'm not going to be able to check those right now. I'll check them when I'm done. So if you message me on TikTok, thank you. I'll get to them. But I'm not going to be able to do it during the stream. Um, so what really happens inside a game room? Here's why there's such a problem. Now, it's good as a policeman to know where your game rooms are at. Because the game rooms are your fishing holes. Yo, I got all my all my arrests. Like, if it was me being proactive, I'm just playing the area from the game rooms. Because for whatever reason, it's like a magnet. All the crumbs that I'm hunting for are at the game rooms at some point throughout the day. Everything that they do, every mistake they make, everybody, anybody who commits like a major crime in the city, they're going to end up at the game room in the next day or two because they're trying to spend the money that they made or they're trying to sell the things they took. So if you ever been ripped off, you ever had somebody break into your car, UEMV your car, and take your, your IDs, I know, guaranteed, there's 53 people live right now. Somebody here has had their car broken into and they stole the registration paperwork from the car. And I've actually heard people say, I don't keep anything in my car but my reg and my safety check or whatever. Or my insurance and reg. They will steal that too. They will steal that and then they will sell them at the game room. It's a trip. They will sell anything, especially personal info. So if you ever had a credit card stolen, they went right to the game room. And typically what they do with your credit card is they'll run to a gas station real quick and they'll swipe it at the pump. Because you know how the pump has like a pre-approved $75 or 100 in Hawaii, it's like $100 pre-approval. So if you swipe your credit card, it sees if you have $75 or $100 available on your card. If it accepts the credit card, then the criminal who just stole your credit card knows that you got money. You haven't sh closed it yet. So they go to the um, pump first so they don't have to walk in the store and get their face on camera. So that's the first thing to do. They steal your credit card. If they steal your wallet and you got credit cards and IDs. They go right to the pump. They swipe different cards at the pumps to know which ones are good and which ones have already been um, turned down. Because a lot of times somebody gets their stuff stolen and they call right away and have them shut down. But they swipe up. It's still good. They go right to the game room and they try to sell them. Or they go to Walmart and they buy whatever. If you've had your wallet stolen or your credit card stolen, you know that the cops either found them caught them on camera at Walmart trying to buy something or Home Depot or what they did is they went to the game room and they sold them. One of my friends, I knew he was undercover. When I was undercover, I was I was working a different case, but my friend who was also undercover but much deeper than me and for like 2 years he was undercover. I was only undercover for like 4 months. This dude was undercover for years and he was in game rooms. And he was buying stolen IDs and credit cards. And this dude would basically wake up in the morning. He had a full beard. Didn't look like himself at all. And he would go to the game rooms. They would get, they'd give him 20 bucks. He'd play the fish game. He said he had a blast. And he'd win a bunch of money. And then he'd try to buy stolen credit cards and IDs from people and he was buying them by the dozens it's so easy to get that's where you get all your stolen merchandise they go right to the game room they try to hawk stuff for cheap so if you're at the game room you're just playing the fish game everybody knows like they can come up to you and try to sell you a lawnmower for 20 bucks or a one weed whip for five bucks or a generator for a hundred bucks remember there's the Generators get stolen all the time in Hawaii, especially from like uh, construction sites. That's why construction companies pay special duty officers to sit there all night. If you ever driven by, you see a motor car with their blue light on. 
just sitting by a construction site with no workers, no work going on. That's because they have been hired to stand by so no one steals the generators and equipment because they will steal them and they'll go right to the game room. So that's probably the major, like the most disruptive thing about the game rooms is it's where people come together to buy and or sell the stolen goods. KG Anohea. Thank you, KG. Thank you, Anohea. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming through. So, the best part about having game rooms on your beat is because you know as soon as there's a robbery or, or a burglary or whatever, all you got to do is go jam the game room. And you don't have to go in. You just sit, you just stand by, get a good vantage point. We call a VP and you just watch. And now typically, you know the dudes with big warrants because we have a, a list that comes out every day of the dudes that got big warrants that are wanted for whatever crimes. So I can't tell you how many times you just post up. You're just sitting there and you see the dude you're looking for. Walk into the game room or walk out of the game room. And you confirm the warrant and you approach and hook the guy up, take him to jail for a $100,000 warrant. Um, so before I get too ahead of myself, I wanted to answer some of the questions in the chat. Kapoi Kai Lions. What's up, Kapoi? Sin City, aloha. Kali'i Shane. What's up, bro? Pamela Perry, aloha. Manny Soria. Wizard Juice. Doug, why not do the book reading on YouTube or post them after they are done? I probably will post them at some point. But if I don't, if I do it on YouTube, then all 5,100 of my subscribers are going to get all that. And the thing about YouTube is I have a lot of subscribers that are here for like the crime videos. So um, a lot of what we're going to do in the book club is interactive. It's not just going to be me. It's going to be the other people that are reading with me, right? So this is the first time we're doing it. So I don't know how I'm going to release it on YouTube, but it hurts the algorithm for me if I'm posting stuff that's unrelated. Not to mention there are people in the chat, there are people in the group that don't necessarily want their face or name or whatever out there for privacy reasons. So there will be something on YouTube. I'll probably do like highlights or there's probably going to be good conversations that come out of it. Um, and no worries, Kim, you didn't miss anything. You came on right when I got on here. Sin City said, order my book today, having trouble with Patreon. Okay. Send me a DM and I'll see if I can help you out. I Ray Z said they need to legalize gambling. Gambling. They just tried, but it just got shut down. What's up? Dupe Loco. And Naomi. JSS Roll 60. Lucky Nines. Pamela Perry said, I remember people getting robbed in their own carport. Pearl City. Red Eye Feeling. They fixed the machines. Guaranteed. Hey, they definitely fixed the machines. Definitely fixed the machines. We know that. Because listen, there's nobody that is... There's nobody managing the machines because it's illegal. Like in a casino... They fix the machines too, but there's a certain there's a certain amount that's acceptable for they, there's like algorithms and numbers that they gotta stay within and they get those machines checked. So in a casino they can do that because that's legal, but nobody's gonna do that in the game room. And then the other thing is if people don't win, then people stop playing. But you, every night every night you gotta have somebody win big or win something so that the rumor spreads. You know how many times I was on the street, I, I was talking to somebody, I asked them, hey, where are you going? Like, I, I arrest somebody and one of the dudes are with, I'm like, where are you going now? So I'm going to the game room. I'm like, yeah, what's wh which game room are you going to? Oh, I'm going to docks or whatever. Somebody hit big yesterday. So I've been playing over there. Or nobody's winning big or nobody's winning big over here, so we don't go there anymore. So you just stop going to places where nobody's winning. But if you hear people winning, everybody, everybody jams in that game room. 
Boy says, I deliver to a game room. They're all over, bro. I've accidentally walked into game rooms. I walked into a game room in Chinatown. I walked upstairs because I was a rookie. And so they sent me to some address. And all the addresses are crazy. Um, in some of these spots where they're like these complexes where there's all these suites. And it's all inside. One entrance, you walk in. It's basically like a apartment complex. But with like conference rooms. And I walk up there looking for this address and I was in the wrong building and I come around the corner and there's all these people gambling inside this room. And I didn't speak Chinese and all these dudes ran up to me speaking Chinese telling me to get out of the building. I'm in full uniform. And they're like trying to block me from what I could see. But I was literally looking for an address. There was like a call. Somebody made a call, domestic violence call. And I come up there and I made a wrong turn or whatever. So you accidentally run into that that thing all the time. And then I also remember going into one on accident in town. I think it was Century Center. Remember Century Center? Century Center is on the Malka Coco Head side of Kapiolani and Kalakawa. That big building. That's where all the massage parlors are. And you'll accidentally go into game rooms all the time. Or massage parlors. Because they're they're all over. Christian House said they get one at Chuck E. Cheese too. Kim says, I don't understand what it is about gambling that people lose their marbles over. The reason that they everybody loves the gambling is there's that rush. It's like dangerous. And if you win that endorphin rush and I mean, it's exciting to win something. Listen, I don't even play the in Detroit. We have the lotto. You buy a lottery ticket and it's like a billion dollars. This last one was like a billion dollars with a B, a, a thousand millions for the lotto. One ticket hit. And I know that the odds are astronomical. There's no way you're going to win the lotto. Ever, ever, ever. You're going to get struck by lightning 13 times before you win the lotto. But for birthdays here in Michigan, it's common for people in the mainland to like give you, you know, when you give a, when you give a birthday card, happy birthday, you open it up and there's a gift card usually. You know, people that do gift cards for birthdays. Well, in the mainland, especially in Michigan, because we got the Michigan lotto, it's really common for you to get a birthday card or a Christmas card. And inside the Christmas or birthday card is a lottery ticket where they played some number for you. Or like scratch-offs. They'll put scratch-offs inside. And man, when you're scratching off, you feel like a crackhead. Honestly, you're like scratching off and, and every number you get, you get excited. And you're like, oh, did I win? And you don't. Oh, did I win? And you don't. You got 30 more numbers to scratch off. And every one of them is this cool, like what's behind door number two. It's that rush. I don't know. There's just a rush to it. And typically you notice like you always hear about wealthy people don't play the lotto. They don't gamble. Um, it's like a, it's a poor man's game. My family has played the lotto. My dad played the lotto every single paycheck. And he would play it every day. To this day, my stepdad plays it all the time. Every day he buys a lottery ticket. Been doing it for... 40 years, 30 years. Never hit the big lotto, but just holding out hope. It's like a cultural thing now. So now everyone just plays a lotto, a dollar a day. You play your same number. And so I get it. I see people all the time that got that rush. So it's got to be what it is. How about when they had winter zone? Yeah, winter zone. Yeah. And it's actually, it's actually the same games. And um, Miyamoto should press the like button. Thank you, sir. The game, Christian Howell says, The game rooms I've been to put the cash in the machine, and if you win, just say cash out, and that guy come and cash you out. See, there are game rooms like that. You catch them. Those are the ones that they don't care. They're the ones that they feel safe for whatever reason. 
that happens. And I know, I know that I've been in game rooms and crazy stuff was going down. I've walked out of game rooms, walked into a game room on accident. I was looking for somebody, saw what was happening, turned around and walked right out. And there's a reason for that. Probable cause is a big deal. In the world of police, probable cause is everything. That's how you function. Probable cause is the air that you breathe. So if I walk into one of those rooms and I see something that's illegal, that I know is illegal, like some dude holding up a handgun or some dude smoking ice or you name it, right? I technically did not have probable cause. The probable cause I had wasn't valid to deal with what I saw. So let's say I walk into a game room looking for somebody and there's a mountain of coke on the desk. The guy who's cutting up the coke or putting it in baggies or whatever sees me draws his weapon because he's not going to jail for the mountain of coke in front of him and I draw my gun because this guy draws his gun and then I shoot him he's dead or shot and now I'm in court trying to justify why he's dead I'm going to get sued the department's going to get sued and I'm going to be in court for a year because they're going to say that I didn't have probable cause that I should have respected the rights of privacy of that business owner, even though it's illegal. So there's a lot to this. So since a police officer works and lives and breathes probable cause, that's sketchy for a police officer to put himself in that position. No cop wants to put himself in that position. I've gone into game rooms looking for somebody where I knew it was a game room. And I've had dudes hiding on me in the back. A lot of these game rooms will have rooms that you can go, like a closet or it looks like a walk-in closet where you could do your drugs, you could sell your stuff or whatever. It's, it's separate from the open playing floor. And typically, whoever's running the game room, like whatever... Whatever Uso is watching the door, because at the time when I was there, it was all Usos that were that were the game room security. Um, there was a little bit of a, like a turf war going on at the time, which is rumored to be what was up with the Pully golf course shooting, if you guys remember that, which we'll get into reading the book, which is Sunny Sky Shady Characters. Go grab that book. Sign up for the book club. We'll talk more about it. But... Um, Basically, there'll be a dude at the door. He's in charge of security. He knows what he lets in and what he lets out. There's even a list on the wall. If you've been in the game rooms enough, you'll see the 86 list. There'll be a list on the wall that says 86. And it's names of dudes that are not allowed back. Because they robbed somebody. They started trouble. They wouldn't give... They owed somebody money or whatever. Or they got caught. Oftentimes, I would go to game rooms... And tell whoever's at the door, whoever's running the game room for the night, whether it's the cashier or the security guard, yo, I'm looking for this dude. So there's going to be heat all around this place until I find him. And what it does, it puts pressure on them to give him up so that I'm not hanging around outside. Because there was a time where I was looking for somebody. I was at the game room every hour of the night, constantly making checks. And I'm not saying driving by with my blue light on all lazy. Park a block down, walk down the street. And typically there's two or three guys always sitting outside, smoking a cigarette. And talking story or whatever. And you constantly see the doors open and closing. And if you post up right, you know by McCulley Car Wash. Or I mean, sorry, um, McKinley Car Wash. Docs was right behind McKinley Car Wash. So you could just park right in that alley behind Kinley Car Wash and watch the door open. You could see who was inside. So you're just chilling. 
You're outside. You're on public property. Door would open. You see who's inside. They walk in. They walk out. They'd walk in with a hand with a bag. Walk out without the bag. So they're delivering drugs and they're delivering stolen goods, whatever. Let me see here. I'm trying to get in the comments because the comment section's going off right now. Okay. The cops know, but no bus. How come? I kind of just got into that. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot to do with probable cause here. But um, Aloha Kipes 808. Thank you. Thanks for the fire. Appreciate you. That's awesome. I normally will stream on like Instagram, but today I figured I'd switch it up to TikTok. Um, I think we're at like 14,000 followers on TikTok, so I never did a live. So shout out to all you guys on TikTok that are logging in right now. I appreciate you. Um, but if you notice, I'm not looking at the camera. It's because I'm either looking at YouTube or TikTok right now. So recently a dude hit me up in the DMs on Instagram saying, yo, there's this game room. It's going off all the time and they never shut them down. How come? How is that possible? And I told him, how do you know it's a game room? And he said, well, you could tell it's a game room. And everybody talks about it, says it's a game room. I was like, yeah, but how do you know it's a game room? Well, there's people standing out front at all hours of the night. Okay. How do you know it's a, there's people standing out front of hotel room uh, out of hotels every day of the night? Like how do you how do you know that that is a game room? Like, well, what else is it going to be? And everybody says it's a game room. Okay, but do you know it's a game room? And it sounds redundant, and I know it's frustrating, but police officers don't work on rumor. You got to work on facts. Like people ask all the time, how come how come you get um, prostitutes walking around Waikiki? You see what they're doing, right? Yeah, you see what they're doing, but it's not illegal to walk up and down the street talking to people. It's not illegal for you to dress in a miniskirt, talk to all the single soldiers that walk by in Waikiki. It's not even illegal to ask them if they want to go on a date. You want a date? That's usually what they say. You by yourself? You want a date? That's not illegal. Police officers don't work on rumor. They don't work on, well, you just, I got a hunch or I know it was a game room. So the reason why the typical police officer, like the your beat cops, don't stop the game rooms is because that's not how it works. They don't know it's a game room. In a court of law, they don't have probable cause that it was a game room. Link Blink, thank you. Shout out to this guy. Sent two fires. I appreciate you. So he said to me, but that doesn't make sense. You know it's a game room. Why don't you just walk in there and see that it's a game room? Well, because the law says that I cannot just walk into the place to see if it's a game room. Because under that same logic, I could just walk into your house to see if you were a drug dealer. But I can't do that. Now, there is a little bit of a gray area because businesses that are open to the public have this nuance of public property, but it's not. It's still a private property, a private business. Blink, blink, thanks for the fire, bro. I appreciate you. All the gifts are going off in TikTok. I don't even know. I've never gotten that before, so I don't even know how to handle that or what it even is. But I appreciate you. That's awesome. So you cannot just say a place is a game room it looks like a game room. There's people hanging out out front. When the door opens, you see people inside. And it's not even illegal to have a fish game. So even if the door opens and you see the fish game, that's not enough. That doesn't mean it's a game room. Believe me, if it walks like a game room and talks like a game room, it's a game room. But that's not how judges and juries work. And as a law enforcement officer for the city and county of Honolulu, you got to follow the Constitution. That's how that works. That doesn't mean that they don't get shut down. Obviously, every week you hear about a game room getting shut down. That happens. 
they shut them down. But I promise you, it snitches. The cops don't bust game rooms, don't bust drug dealers, don't bust massage parlors unless somebody's snitching. You need a snitch. You need, not only do you need a snitch. I just I don't mean somebody saying, "Yo, that's a game room." That's not enough. That's not the kind of snitch you need. You need someone to fill out a actual statement. You need somebody that's going to fill out a police report. Be willing to testify. Because if they're not willing to testify, they were never they never gave you the info. The info never makes it past discovery, the discovery trial. Unless they were willing to fill it out. That's why if you've ever been like um if you've ever been a victim of a crime in Hawaii, which most of you probably have if you're in Hawaii, the cop always asked you three important questions. Did you give the person permission? Can you identify them? And are you willing to prosecute? If you are not willing to prosecute, then they will not arrest the dude. Because in court, you have to be willing to testify or it didn't happen. We have a saying in police work in Honolulu. It's like, if it's not in the report, it didn't happen. You can't just not write it in the report and then later when you get to court be like, oh yeah, this is what happened. You have to write it in your report for it to be admissible. So you have to have somebody who's willing to snitch. Oftentimes that comes in the form of somebody that you got a case on. Somebody caught a case. Like how this whole Mike Miskey thing went down. It all came down to... Somebody catching a case, somebody snitching, becomes witness, testifies against so-and-so. That's how it works. So if you ever saw a game room raided or a massage parlor raided, somebody was snitching. Maybe not the whole time, but they initially snitched. That gave them the actual witness testimony on a report. So they sent in the undercover officer. The undercover uh, the undercover officer then builds the case because he bought 10 IDs, 10 stolen or fake IDs on these dates at these times. Here's the picture over a one month period. He went there every day and every day he bought a stolen ID from this guy. Or he gambled on this machine. He paid money. He won. They cashed him out with the money. Here's all the money and they put it in the report and it's all documented. So that's how the cases get built. So it's not that they're not shutting them down. They are shutting them down and they are attacking. They are investigating, but it takes a while. You need like three buys or you need like three buy-ins, three three times for it to be considered legitimate is like a good rule. They want more, but three is a good rule. So typically you're never going to see an officer just walk into a game room. Now, it happens when you're looking for people, right? So if I'm looking for a dude, I will ask the security guard, yo, have you seen so-and-so? I'm looking for him. They don't want the heat. They don't want the officers looking for people. Because then nobody shows up, nobody spends money, and they don't make money. So more times than not, they say, yo, I seen him. He, he comes in every night at 7 or whatever. This way, the dude shows up at 7, you jam him before he gets to the door, and then he's pow, he goes to jail, and then you're gone. Now the game room does what they got to do. So sometimes they help you out. And I can't tell you how many times I've been looking for a dude, constantly checking the game room, and then you see his name on the 86 list. Because they know you're looking for him, so he gets 86. He shows up, he's got to get kicked out. And at some game rooms, there's a security guard or multiple security guards and a cashier. There used to be one Chinatown by the First Hawaiian. By the First Hawaiian. The old one on the south side of King Street with the big pillars. Right next to that building. There used to be, that might even be River Street. 
I forget the name of the street that it was on, but we would walk in there all the time and you'd see the 86 list. And it was always dudes we were looking for. They knew they were being looked at. Remember Jake Smith and all the robberies of the game rooms? You'd have the names on there of the dudes that were robbing or were looking for. And they'd be 86. They didn't want the heat. They didn't want the drama. Christian said, yep, never went to a game room by myself. Super sketchy. Yep. Super sketch. Naomi Nishida Augustine said, Vegas had better roads, zero potholes versus Hawaii. Transportation, buses system, Hawaii residents, gambling, donations is their state. Yeah. Honestly, I got no problems. I live in Detroit. We have casinos in our city. Actual casinos. The real deal. Clay Smith, my grandpa was a retired officer. He's in the BMW photo on the old sidecar bike. Oh, no way. That's awesome, Kale. If he's still alive, tell him I said thank you. Tell him I said, how's it? Waiters 808, how's it? So, um, Kimberly, said, Kimberly said, some are in laundromats. Yep, I've seen that too. Kuakini had one in a laundromat. Just Makai of the hospital on Kuakini. That we used to find dudes at. Pamela Perry said, guys, consider donating kids' clothes to local elementary school for the medical fragile speci special ed classroom. I'm down with that. Give you a shout out for that one. Kimberly wants info. Kapoi Kai Lion said, it's either a game room or a massage parlor. Yep. Or both. I've been to both. said uh j we dragon j w e dragon said thank you for your service i've got your six give me a 10 five that's my location it's funny the 10 codes are different in different places right in honolulu that's your location aloha he's not but thank you for serving oahu thanks kale thanks for checking in so In the game rooms, you got plenty guns, plenty drugs, plenty stolen merchandise. So somebody steals your chain, breaks in your car, steals your chain, or breaks in your house, steals your chain, car keys, IDs. They go into the game room. Whenever officer, so plenty of times there was officers who had their cars broken into, right? And dude breaks in the car, goes in the trunk, takes the officer's gun out. Now we never let that hit the news. Because you don't want them to throw the gun in the water or try to get rid of the gun because it's too hot. So what you try to do is sweat them, squeeze them. So every time a policeman's gun or vest, because bulletproof vest got stolen too, like they would burglarize a house and steal the officer's vest, we go right to the game rooms. And I'm not even kidding you when I tell you that if all the districts just went to the game rooms and they would check, somebody in that game room knew where those things were at. So it's a perfect fishing hole. And for proactive cops that are trying to keep their beats clean, that was the place to hunt. No joke, there'd be a robbery, like a gunpoint robbery or a carjacking. And it, it they'd, they'd APB it on the radio and say a carjacking, uh, Pearl City, the suspect vehicle last... Um, scene heading Coco Head on H1 at Ward. Everybody in District 1, which is that area, would go to the game rooms. They would post up by the freeway, post up by the game rooms. And then sure enough, somebody go on the radio, hey, I got the black BMW southbound on whatever, missing plates. No matching plates, whatever. Then it's on. Because they go to the game rooms to try to hustle them and sell them. For whatever reason, they're drawn to it. And that's where they buy ice. Like, if you can't get a hold of your plug, you can't get a hold of your dealer, just go to the game room. The dealers are there. And typically, the dudes that run the door are the ones that sell the drugs. They get to decide who comes in and pushes the drugs. So if you're trying to buy Batu, 
then there's one dude they get their batu from, and it's probably the doorman or his family. And he gets to control the drug trade. But there might be one other guy that he buys his ma'a from, his crack. And then he sells that crack. Because he gets a certain deal. So if you're looking for stolen goods or drugs or sex or whatever, you go to the game room. It's easy to find. It's like the game room is like the Walmart of the criminal element. It's where you get everything. It's like the Safeway. You can get a hat, maybe even some pants. But you can get kitchen utensils, you can get food, balloons, flowers, whatever. The game room is like that one-stop shop. Everything you need at the game room. If it's clandestine, if it's illegal, go to the game room, you can grab it. That's why the game rooms are so popular. And that's why they're so dangerous and that's why people are always going after the game rooms. That's why people always mention the game rooms. But if you're a normal guy that just likes to play poker or you're not going to find poker at the game room, but if you're a normal guy that just likes to gamble, you'll go to the game room and not have that on your mind, but there's no way you're not going to see it because dude's pulling out ice, whatever, right in front of you. So... Just had mine jacked. Yep, and that's a long night. Is there a lot of drugs in game rooms? From James Karens. All the drugs. Some would say all the drugs are in the game room. Any drug you need. You want black tar? Black tar is like the... Tar heroin is the typical heroin that people shoot. It comes in like a little piece of plastic that's folded over. You ever spit your gum out and you use like a piece of plastic... And you spit your gum in and folded it over. That's how black tar heroin gets sold. It's either in a baggie or a piece of plastic that they put the tar in and they squeeze it. And it's sticky tar. That's tar heroin. That's just your typical heroin. Then there's stuff called boy. Boy is the white heroin. Um, some people do tar. And some people do boy. All the tar was from Mexico. It was Mexican heroin. Um, but the boy is like... Afghanistan or somewhere over there. Um, if you want crack, game room. You want Batu or crystal meth, it's the game room. Oh, Kingston's Pride. Thanks for the 20 bucks. I appreciate you. Thanks for the support. Good looking out. You guys are the best, man. Shout out to Kingston's Pride. Aloha, my friend. That's generous of you, man. That's awesome. Okay, um, so cops will leave the game room open to catch criminals? Not necessarily. It's not a... They're not actively allowing the game rooms to be open. But as a beat officer, I can't close a game room. That can't happen. A police officer can't do that. Like your typical cop. The dude on the street can't just close a game room. And technically, the narco vice guys aren't closing the game rooms. The narco vice guys are just arresting dudes and taking machines. They can't stay open because they don't have anything, but we're not allowed to shut them down, right? So as a beat cop, I can't go in there and confiscate the machines because it's not illegal to own a gambling uh, a fish game. Because it's just a game. It's not like it shoots out money. It's not like a slot machine. You know what I mean? Because there's so many steps to probable cause. And as a beat cop, you can't shut them down. I'm just saying that I didn't mind the game rooms in my sector or in my district because that's where I caught all my bad guys. It's like a funnel. So as a cop, I didn't mind the game rooms because that's where I found all my dudes. Because it would be easy to hide. I get that question from mainlanders all the time. How hard can it be to be a cop in Hawaii? It's an island. You can't go nowhere. Well, 
First of all, it's a huge island, and it's all mountain. And everybody knows everybody. And everybody knows the pig trails and the alleyways. It's easy to get away. Most importantly, because it's the Ninth Circuit, it's the Ninth Circuit Court, and it's hard to be a cop. And they'll jam you on probable cause big time. See, the Constitution allows for a certain amount of prob like this is how much probable cause you need. But the state of Hawaii and the Ninth Circuit, they like put they like widen that a little bit to make it harder for a policeman. So you don't get close to what the Constitution gives you. They make these little fences on the outside of it so you don't get too close. They make it harder. States can make it harder. They can give people more freedoms, but they cannot take away freedoms from the Constitution. So you can give more freedoms, essentially. Like I told you last week that the police, the dude that um, fought me, he got off. He didn't get in trouble for hurting me because the prosecutors had said that there was a precedent set that police officers should expect a certain amount of resistance when arresting an individual. Well, the Constitution doesn't say that. So as a police officer, I'm supposed to expect a certain amount of resistance when I'm trying to arrest somebody? It's literally like having a bad kid at home and he runs his mouth and talks back to you, tells you to shut up. Your little kid tells you to shut up, the parent. And you spank them and they say, you can't spank them. You're a parent. You got to, listen, you got to expect he's going to call you an idiot. You got to allow for a little bit of that just because it's normal in your house because you don't take care of your kid. Like it's like a learning curve they put on it. It's crazy. So Hawaii does that. The Ninth Circuit does that. It's the same circuit court as L.A. And it's super liberal. And I don't mean politically. I mean as far as the Constitution is concerned. So they make it very difficult for a policeman. So anybody in Hawaii that complains about being arrested or being convicted of something, you must have made it really easy because dudes get off most of the time. If I had to guess, more than half of all the cases get thrown out. That's like a 50-50 chance. If I ever got arrested in Hawaii, I'm taking it to court because I'm probably going to beat it. That's the truth. Okay, Aloha. Aloha, bro. Aloha. Thank you. Waiters808, what's the donation for? Um, somebody was talking about donations in the chat to um, donating kids' clothes to the local elementary school. The special ed classrooms for middle, middle school and high school. If you were wondering what that donation was for. I don't know. I don't have anything to do with that. Don't give me money for that because I don't have... I'm not connected with that. Um, they were just saying consider donating. And I will consider donating as well. Okay. Okay, so I have one from Shorko Electric. Can you please explain the whole child trafficking thing in Oahu and what we can do to help these kids, girls, or boys? That will be its own. I'm going to have to do my own video just for that. But I will say that, because this is a popular question that I've been getting. I do not believe that ch the ch child trafficking is a bigger problem now than it was 10 years ago or 10 years before that or 10 years before that. I'm not convinced I haven't seen the evidence. I've seen a lot of stories online. I've seen a lot of rumors and urban legend and, and stuff that's uncorroborated. But I haven't seen the proof or any evidence that it's worse now than ever before. I do know that we have social media. Everybody's on these curated feeds like Hawaii Viral and the 808 and all these things on Instagram. So it appears like it's bigger than ever. But I think a lot of it is conspiracy theory. But it does happen. But it always has been happening. Hawaii has a connection with places like Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Chicago, and Detroit, and New York City. For a while, prostitution, the biggest link was Chicago and Detroit and, and Vegas, where we get like prostitution. 
And anytime you have prostitution, you're going to have child trafficking. Because pimps don't just, they don't check IDs, yeah. They, they, they just, they want the girls to look young. Because they make more money off them. And the girls just got to lie to them about their age. And they're just, you know what I mean? And oftentimes what happens from my, from my experience, because I've spoken with victims... I've arrested girls for prostitution and then talked to them about their man, their man, right? They never, it's not their pimp, it's their boyfriend. 100% of them believe that it was their boyfriend. 100% of the ones I've talked to, dozens of them, they called him their man. My husband, my boyfriend, my man. They were not pimps. And you'd ask them, like, do you have a pimp? Early on, before I knew they were going to tell me no, I would say, so do you have a pimp? They'd be like, no, I work by myself, honey. Like, well, who do you live with? I live with my man. Well, just so you know, that's your pimp. You're giving all this money to him. But in their head, that's how they think they're he's their man. That's how they stay in the game. It's like a complete mind control. It's very rare that they don't have. Now, there's a few in Waikiki. You've all seen them, the same girls. There's um, across from the Moana. On Kapahulu. I'm sorry, on Kalakaua, across the street where there's that. Um, I think it's maybe across the street from the Surf Rider. But there's an ABC store. And at night, you usually have a couple of Holly girls. And a couple of Popolo girls. And they're super beautiful, high class. Those girls don't have a pimp, don't have a, a man. But they've been working, that's their stroll, they call it. That's like their area. Those girls work by themselves, but they've been there forever. And they typically only sleep with Japanese tourists. Because the chances of them being a cop is really low if they're Japanese they don't speak English so they look for the Japanese tourists and the Japanese tourists typically pay more money listen I'm not this is from me talking to the actual prostitutes and from me talking to the Johns because they usually get robbed there's not I wouldn't say the majority and I, I shouldn't say usually but oftentimes they get robbed they take them up to the hotel room they take all their cash. They tell the dude to get in the shower. The dude goes in the shower. He comes back out. They're gone with the money. And they will charge 10 times what they'll charge a holly guy or a local guy. So, because I don't want to get kicked off the live for content, whatever, they, whatever service they provide, let's say they charge $300 for, say, what they wanted to charge me when I went undercover. They would charge me 300. They would charge a Japanese tourist 3000 and he would pay it. And then when he gets robbed, call the police and the police say, okay, you're going to fill out a, what happened? He's all oh, my girl, my girlfriend robbed me or this girl I met robbed me. And we know what that means. That's a prostitute, sir. That's a prostitute. He's like, no, no, no. I just met her at a club. Okay. Are you willing to prosecute? And he's like, no, 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 I don't want to prosecute. It happened all the time. I'm not anybody who's ever worked in Waikiki, any officer ever worked in Waikiki, they heard this story. No, no, I don't want to prosecute. Because he got family back home. So that happens all the time. But that's only a very small minority of the girls. Most of them, everybody on Kuhio working with somebody. Some pimp is watching them. They usually stay up in the hotels on Kuhio, on the Malka side of Kuhio. There's all those high rises, and they watch the stroll. So the dudes will watch from their hotel room or their condo. They'll watch their girls, keep an eye on them. And then a couple of them ride around on mopeds, or they walk. There's a couple, there's one dude named Slim who used to walk around, a Popola guy named Slim who used to walk around. He had dreads, and he would just walk around keep an eye on his girls. But you can usually tell the pimps because they stop at all the traffic lights. They don't cross the street on the blinking red hand. They wait for the white hand. They stay on the right side of the crosswalk. They do everything right. Nobody in Waikiki waits for the crosswalk. 
You know, it's technically illegal to start to enter an intersection when the red hand is blinking. You're only allowed to enter on the white hand. But you'll see the Popola guy with dreads, who you've seen walk 10 times by you, because I used to work there. I used to do special duty at McDonald's every weekend. And this dude would wait for the the white hand to open up. And he'd stay on the right side of the crosswalk. Because in Honolulu, you got to stay on the right side of the crosswalk when you walk through. And would stop at every light. Wouldn't do anything illegal. Would never jaywalk. None of that. Wouldn't make eye contact with people. Just walk. He'd just be like on the phone. And I cannot tell you how many times you arrest the prostitute she's not going to give up her man but sometimes it happens and you find out they're from detroit or chicago i told this before i think but had one guy named blue diamond he was from detroit he used to drive around in a escalade with all coa interior it was a hundred thousand dollar interior and he was pimping girls in hawaii he was from detroit and they called him blue diamond <clears throat> so I will do a trial trafficking video just like I'm doing this about game rooms. So I don't want to get off too, too much off topic. But Young Picasso said, where are most of the game rooms at? They're in town. Most of the game rooms in town. But also like Waipahu Pro City. You're going to find them in there too. But um, what we, you know, Kamoku. There's tons on Kamoku. Um, behind Walmart. You know the um what's that what's the name of that hotel on Makaloa? <sighs> what's it called? Oh it's not coming to my mind. Everybody knows it's got the, the Ulua in the in the water that swims around. Anyway, um centuries the Century Center got plenty of game rooms. Kona Street, Queen Street got tons of them. Where all the auto auto body shops are on Queen Street. Kaim, um, what's it called? Kaiman, Kaimanu? Kaimanu Street? Or is it Waimanu? I forget which street is down there by P. Koi and Queen. Down by Kona. Tons of them over there. And in Chinatown, got three, four, or five of them. Remember Cuties? They used to do that spot called Cuties on King Street, the Malka side of King Street, across on the bank, by like Nuuanu, by Mauna Kea. Tons of them. Waiya'o, great to hear you again. Thanks, Waiya'o. Joyce Martin. They will never legalize gambling here. I don't think they will. Television show said, do they still do chicken fights there? Yes, there's still chicken fights in Hawaii. Come on now. Yeah, Pagoda. Hot Ponds, Pagoda. You're right. Oh, everybody came in with Pagoda. I don't know why it wasn't coming to my head, but I, I too much to think about on this chat. But Waiters, Josie Kapu, and Hot Ponds said Pagoda. So Pagoda, there was tons all around that area. I remember two on... Makaloa right there. Remember, you know where Kicks Hawaii is at? Right next to Kicks Hawaii in that same strip had two game rooms. That's the one that um, I think Jake Smith and that one boy robbed. Plus had one on, remember the moped shop on Kalakaua on the Cocoa Head side past just Makai of King Street on the right side. I used to chase dudes out of there and jump into that stream right behind that that shop. I cannot tell you how many times I've been in that stream chasing dudes. I thought game rooms were illegal already. They are. Marvin Davis Jr. Where you been, bro? LOL. I know. Well, I've been on for like five days in the last ten Okay, 
television show. Yes, Pamela Perry. One time I was walking my dog in Kalihi, and this lady stopped and asked if I knew of a game room nearby she was looking for her husband. Yo, that's a true story. Happens all the time. Naomi Nishida, Augustine. Okay, Doug, aloha. Thanks, Naomi. PHK Johnny Walker. Back in the day, it was gambling halls, and they were all pretty much in Chinatown. There was a huge turf war over control of the security for the halls, a couple murders, and tons of assaults. Yeah, same deal. Same thing. Same thing. Happens all the time. Nothing's really changed. Um, wow. Jovan Lopez. Thank you for the $5. Thanks for the $5 gift. Blowing it up. You guys are great. Okay. Wow, I just missed a bunch. Okay. Get choke on Oahu now from Kingston's Pride. Yeah, they're all over the place. They pop up. They can shut them down. They get their game, the gaming machines back. They open up a new one. They make so much money, it's insane. Game rooms, though, could be a thing to talk about if you don't want to talk about your other trafficking. So you could use it as an excuse that you're in the game room. I don't know. Could be a good thing to talk about. If you don't want to talk about your other trafficking, so you could use it as an excuse that you're in a game room. I don't know what that means. Big Kids Fun Factory. Yeah, straight out of Aloha. That's what it is. It's Fun Factory for adults. That's exactly what it's the same vibe. Kimberly, you didn't want to lose money. That's why you run in the game rooms. JSS Roll60 said, I lost over half a million playing scratch offs over the years. I won 25K on pick four and 10K also. Your best chance of winning is playing poker, betting on sports. Yeah, that's what everybody says. You're not going to win the lottery. And if you do, by the time you're done, all the years that you played, it ain't worth it. You lost all your money already. Lotto doesn't sound bad. It's not that bad. I mean, honestly, it's not that bad here. And then so much money goes to our schools and our roads. 808 says fish games in all the rooms. Yep, everyone going to have the fish game. That's the most popular one. If the police know where the game rooms are, how come they raid them so infrequently? So that's, I just talked about that, but if you missed it, they do raid them all the time. But you got to build cases. And there's certain things the prosecutors ask for. So the more things you that they ask for, the more things you try to build. So if the prosecutors say they want five buys, they want five attempts with the same person. So the same undercover to go in and get five buys and then get paid out the same way. So you go in and you get 10 because you want to make sure you have the evidence so it goes to court. But too many times you bring it in, the prosecutors throw it out for whatever reason. So they raid them frequently. There's like every week they're they're jamming a game room. It don't always make the news, but every week they're jamming the game room. There are people up at Narco. That's all they do. Not to mention, every time you jam them, the owner of the game room gets hip to it, learns what he got screwed up on, and then fixes that. It covers the, the leak, so to speak. It's like the loopholes. There's mad loopholes with gambling. Are game rooms open to the public? If so, your PC's good. You would think so. You would think so. But technically, all they got to say is it wasn't open to the public. And that's why there's a doorman that lets you in. So, that's something that's debated all the time. And I'll call you Tom. I know it's not your name, but I'll call you Tom. The last 10 years has been crazy in what has happened with precedent. So, unfortunately, it doesn't work. 
just because it was open to the public. Because they just got to say they weren't open to the public. But we say, but the door was open and people were just walking in. So now they got to prove that. So what they do is they will have camera footage of people walking in and walking out. And then they need somebody that's willing to fill out a statement saying that they don't ask for me. You know what I mean? They just let me in. It's open to the public. And then we take that to court. We finally shut them down, make the arrest, take the machines, go to court, and they throw it out. And they say, no, they said it wasn't open. It was private. And then they toss it. Straight out of Aloha said, can you confiscate a house? Yes. I mean, not a beat cop. But there are ways to do that, especially if it was bought with funds or proceeds as a result of the illegal activity. Yep, all Uso's doorman and the Asian handles the money. Usually, for whatever reason, there's always like an Asian dude as the cashier or a chick. I've seen it plenty of times where it was a girl, Asian dude or Asian girl, who handles the money. And then the Uso's are always running the door. Always the big guys. And they're always mad respectful. Always respectful. What is the crew all about? CRU, the crime reduction unit, that's the plainclothes guys. And those guys are usually the guys that spend the most time in the game rooms. But there was a time where you weren't allowed to go, go in game rooms at all. We had a shooting in the game room. And the higher-ups, the brass, told us that we weren't allowed to go in game rooms anymore. Told the policemen they weren't allowed to go in the game rooms. Because cases kept getting thrown out and they're worried about lawsuits. I'm not making this stuff up. Believe me, cops want to go in the game rooms. And they do. But a lot of times they can't use what they see because fruit of the poisonous tree. So are you willing to go in that game room? Somebody ends up getting shot and then you find yourself in court and during discovery they're trying to throw out your PC, your probable cause. Now you're fighting for your job, fighting for your family, getting sued. And somebody dies because they got shot. Was it worth it? And then you risk your life getting shot. And don't forget, you're a policeman. You're not going to get shot in the vest. You're going to get shot in the neck, the face, or the side. It's going to go right through the vest. That's how policeman's luck works. We should at least be able to play Kino here at bars. Yo, I don't have a problem with it, honestly. I probably... I, I don't have a problem with that. People are still going to go to the game room because people still want to sell drugs and whatever. Waiters, waiters, waiters. So prosecutors are crooks and on the take. They're not crooks. I wouldn't say they're crooks. Prosecutors only take cases they can beat. I, mean, I shouldn't say only. They want to take cases they can win. They're not going to spend weeks on a case that they know they can't win because the courts are going to throw it out because of some Supreme Court ruling because we're in the Ninth Circuit. So prosecutors dump the case. It's what we call dumping the case. Where they say it's not going to go and the charges get dropped. Okay, so do they need to be in a business area or can game rooms be in a neighborhood? They're in, game, they're in neighborhoods too. That happens too. Especially those neighborhoods that have like, you know, up in Pa'oa, there's a house on the corner by the freeway. That also is like a store, like a restaurant. They sell Lao Lao and um, Filipino food. And you can get breakfast, super cheap breakfast. In areas where you get houses that also have businesses at the bottom, those are notorious. Bro, once in Kaka'ako, you know how they had that, there's that one food truck. It's like a, it's like a trailer that has a bunch of lights on the outside. And it's like a Korean spot. It's a bunch of Koreans like all night. It's like popping. There's music playing or whatever. True story. Me and my partners w wanted to get something to eat. And it's like a, I, we saw people eating in the restaurant. There's like tables with people eating and I wanted to get the food. So we like walked up, opened the door and the guy's like, you can't come in here. I said, we're just trying to get something to eat. He said, well, we're closed. And I could see people eating, taking orders right through the window. I said, bro, they're, they're taking orders. He's like, sorry, we're closed. So I talked to one of my guys that usually gives me info and he's like, oh, that's a game room. That's why they didn't let you in. So I was tripping. We're in uniform, like just trying to get some food, but it's like 2 a.m. And of course, 
as policemen, you're already sketchy about where you eat because you know people are going to spit in your food and that kind of stuff. Happens all the time. So how do they get shut down? They get shut down because of a snitch. Somebody snitches. And then they they make a case. They make a bunch of buys undercover. And they take all the machines, take all the money, arrest the people. and get shut down for a month until they rebuild and bail out. And then they open them up again. Have a cross that I went into one on accident. Haha, ha, I was just looking for a place to play pool on Yelp. Ended up at this sketchy place with a 10-foot someone dude. He ended up being cool and let me play for free for an hour. Okay. Macaulay Q. That's all I'm going to say. Right next door, get that one game room just adjacent to it. So... So many people just looking for a place to play pool walk into a game room. TX Raw Sig said, I think I got a ticket from you before down by Kaimuki area. I never worked Kaimuki. I never worked Kaimuki. Must have been some other Holly guy. My whole career I worked in town. So all the way up to Haole Street, which is like just Coco Head of Punahou. My whole career I worked there and in Waikiki. When I was undercover, I was everywhere, but I didn't I wasn't writing tickets. Like a confidential informant? Yes. That's what I'm talking about when I say snitch. Confidential informant. Straight out of Aloha said, I seen houses get destroyed, down and gone, only grass left on the land. Yep. Fire, fire. No work on YouTube. Sorry, bro. Takashi69. Crime Reduction Unit. What's the crew all about? Mauna Kea, my friend. The street is Mauna Kea. Yep. Yeah. And then Kim says Kauhipa. Kauhipa get too. I know Um, used to be one right by Nanko. Remember Nanko Fish Supply? Are they still there? Is Nanko still open? But across the street, across on Kohipa. That's where my church was on Kohipa. Had game rooms over there. Is it hard to get a gambling license in Hawaii? It's straight up illegal, Jovan. Cannot. And thank you for the $5, bro. Jovan gambling illegal in Hawaii. Shoot, if I knew that, I would have went in. Kohipa, Kaneo, I had two before. Yep. That was by Kuka Ilimoku. Right on top of each other, Kauhipa. Kanyoe D4, yeah, District 4. Kingston Pride said, lunch. Thanks for lunch, bro. I appreciate you. MBI shuts game rooms. Basically, people messing everything up. Making game into a habit. Kuka Ilimoku said D5, Kalihi. Yeah, that's D5. I work D1 and D6, which is Waikiki in town. Yo, somebody commented on my video yesterday about my breathing in, that I take deep breaths. A lot of it is voice control. I'm trying not to pop in the mic. I have a microphone, you know what I mean? Oops, sorry. So I have a microphone, and I'm trying not to pop in the mic. So you try not to talk too loud. So I hope... um. I hope uh, it's not bothering you guys. And I've been real wheezy. My nose is stuffy. Dick Wolf said, ask the question, why do you folks go after people of core role? I have no idea what you're talking about, bro. Oh, Dick Wolf said, why do you go after people of color? I have no idea who you're talking about. You're obviously trolling Dick Wolf 300. And you probably never been to Hawaii. So you can you can stop with the nonsense. Why do you target people of color all the time? Wow, you said that three times on TikTok. How's this clown? Dick Wolf. Dick Wolf 300 trying to troll on the TikTok. It's all good, bro. Yes, I'm a cop. 
Okay, wow. Hawaii system is so broken. My neighbor who was FBI got his gun stolen out of his trunk. Even Lani, like 15 years ago. Happens all the time, Pamela. What are public defenders like to work with? You know they're not bad. Television show just asked what are public defenders like to work with. They're not bad, you know. And they're good people. And this is just like, it's just a thing. You're in court. You're the, you're testifying for the prosecution. And they're there to help the suspect. So they come to the prosecutor. I, you don't usually work with the public defenders, first of all. I never worked with the public defender. I work with the prosecutor. The prosecutor works with the public defender. But what I knew, they were always friends. Like they go out to lunch. They always hang out. They're cordial. When it, when they walk in the courtroom, it's all different, right? They're like basically, you know, competition. It's kind of like a game and who's going to win. But they seem cool. Public defenders are just normal people. Doug, who brings in bars of Xanax? Cartel? No, it's not the cartel. That's all going to be like... That's just prescription drugs. That's just mismanagement of the prescription drug community. You know what I mean? Kuko Ilimoku said, but the real question is, would you fight Fed charges? Negative. Fed's going to get you. Fed charges going to get you. That's for sure. Shole Lua said, Aloha, brother. Andrea J35. Aloha from Maui. Aloha, Maui. Frex 808, besides the drugs and prostitution, game rooms don't sound that bad. <laughs> They're actually fun. From the f Talking to my homie who was undercover, played them all the time. He says, fun playing the game. Rachel Suzuki. What's up, Rach? Thanks for coming through. Miss you guys. Bro, 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 bro. What's up? These drug dealers, they family has infiltrated our schools. Yep. What you think my friend will get? He's the one who stabbed that kid in Hawaii Kai. Oh, he gonna go jail for life. It's probably what's gonna happen. He'll get he'll get thirty. He'll get thirty years if you can ask me. You talking about Jake Edwards? Backdoor 206 said the kid had mental problems. He was good friends and he attacked him. He just defended himself with one stab. That'll all come out in court. That might have happened, you know. I've seen crazier things. Nobody likes to jump to conclusions with that. So, Pinche, so Corey Fatafehi Follow said Pinche Americanos, no cartel aquí. There is cartel. Seen it with my own eyes, Corey. Seen it with my own eyes. She said, essentially, stupid Americanos, there's no cartel here. But there is, Corey. I've seen it with my eyes. There wasn't for a long time. I talked about that in a prior video. It was hard for them to come over here. But they do try and they do get here. So I know for a fact. How often do you work with the law enforcement on the other islands, Maui, Kauai, etc., when you work in cases? Uh, not all the time, Skyline. Skyline Leather asks, how often does HPD work with Maui and other islands? Not often. But obviously when somebody goes to a different island, we call over there and they help us out. They're like our sister departments, you know what I mean? They work city county just like we do. We all work in the state of Hawaii. So we work together, but it's not very often. You just call over and say, hey, we're looking for this guy. And they're like, oh, yeah, we've seen this guy. So it does happen. I heard of the murder castle on Big Island 2, Urban Legend, or for real? I don't know about that, the murder castle. I never heard about that. Kael, how's it, Doug? Recently found your channel. I dig the content. Thanks, Kael. Appreciate you. Thanks for coming through. Kaae Kuahivi. That's a dope last name. Kim Manson, 
Yo, those girls can throw down as in throwing blows. Wait, you know what I mean? Yeah. The mean those girls. If you're talking about the ones in Waikiki. Why don't they just legalize gambling then? They're trying, but it's not going to happen. They're trying. They just shut down that. Notorious Slim, said Kuka Ilimoku. Waya O says, if no time, no need to answer. Assault and battery. At a presentation for our department, Fed asked about it. I said, oh, and then you broke off. I said, assault can be threatening motion while battery is an actual physical move. He called me off and said, no, that's only for the state. Rest of presentation, shut my mouth. So, we don't have assault and battery in Hawaii. So, assault is very simple. If you hurt somebody, if you cause other people pain, physical pain, that's assault with intent. So, that's how you can differentiate. So, you have harassment, which is, let's say you smack a dude, but he doesn't feel pain. He's just embarrassed. That's harassment. So, when an officer is asking you, did you feel pain? If you say no, it's harassment. If you say yes, it's assault. Assault third. That's what. So, we don't have assault and battery in Hawaii. Bum by Paul. Lots of people washing clothes at Palolo Laundromat. <laughs> yep. Palolo has game rooms for sure. Parents have no rights in the Ninth Circuit. I don't know much about the laws with parental laws, but the Ninth Circuit is a mess. Nanko is still open. Good. They're right next to a. Um, Used to be a vacuum shop, yeah? Wow. Dang, so many um, comments, guys. I don't know if I can get to all of them. Century Center, Pagoda. Yeah, we talked about that by Baskin Robbins. You ever talk about how the Academy was? I know you talked about the process. I didn't get into the Academy yet. That's the next episode of the podcast. Jovan says he's from Marina, California. Y'all, we got people from California in the chat. Thank you guys for coming out. So I can get assault if I don't even touch the woman. No, you got to touch. If you're going to catch an assault charge in Hawaii, you actually have to cause physical pain with force. That's what assault is. Trina Nelson, like your shirt and cool job. Yeah, this is um, Frontline if you go to Instagram, go to Frontline Hawaii, cop the merch. Marissa Arakaki, do you know about the baby katana story? No, um, I don't know. I know they're looking in um, Mokulea, yeah, but I don't know if they found anything. Dick Wolf 300 said, then answer the question, why do cops target people of color about they target white folks? That's nonsense, bro. You're living in, I don't know what world you're living in, but that's nonsense. All the cops that I deal with, they look for bad guys. That's it. That's what it comes down to, bro. You obviously never been to Hawaii. It ain't about color, homie. Did you ever have to work with military in town from Frex 808 all the time? All the time. All the time. And we actually have a liaison that stays at CRD, which is Central Receiving. It's an officer that gets posted up in CRD just for when we arrest soldiers. It's basically a, li a liaison. And then we'd have to work with MPs sometimes if a big boat landed, if the Navy ship landed and all the Navy guys get off. We'd have to work with the MPs 
because they tell us like yo they're landing especially in Waikiki they get a notice hey we got a big ship coming in tonight they're going to be here for two days so it usually gets crazy and the bars and there's always fights and everybody getting drunk constantly people like on the beach you know how you're not supposed to be on the beach in Waikiki after 10 so there's constantly like park closure stuff okay I got like three minutes guys I've been on hour 45 minutes unreal the time was flying I had a blast hanging out with you guys but I'm gonna have to cut it short this is probably still the longest stream I ever did but We get game rooms on the whole island now. They're everywhere. Behind Kicks Hawaii. Yep, yeah, that was what I was talking about. Nihau is suspect is suspect for me regarding trout trafficking. I don't know. I don't know not much about Nihau. Ten dollar big spider. Bombay Power, you talking about the on the um on the fish game. Trouble in Kailua. Yeah, all the time. You know what? Not like crazy trouble, but Kailua, dudes like to scrap in Kailua. Always have fights in Kailua. Is it true a lot of people that get arrested from game rooms just get a slap on the wrist? Yeah, the owners, they just get slap on the wrist. They get a fine. They lose their machines. They got to pay all the money to get the machines put back in. Give a like 109 on chat. 109 people on the chat. Hawaiian Soul says, give a like. Thank you, Hawaiian Soul. <laughs> okay, another one. I was trained to get details right. Officer got color of car wrong. I brought that up. Judge says it's not important. Yeah, so... Yeah, no, that's important, especially in the Ninth Circuit. The color of the car, gonna that's going to change that whole game. There are game rooms in Kailua. Yo, Dougie, did you hear about the girl with the last name Akao that got arrested a few days ago? It's in connected with Mike Miski and the Chemical Nightclub case scene that in Hawaii news. Check it out. I did, you know. Jovan, a couple people already um, messaged me about some girl last name Akao. Now, I never checked the logs yet, but you can go to the Honolulu Police Department website and there is an arrest log you can see the people have been arrested so if you find out about what that time you can go down you can check everybody's name and info is there and you can see what they're arrested for Liliha game room sliding doors closed last week I had someone Chris Kono said I had someone break into my car on Alamona Boulevard and the cops said they knew who did it and they get arrested like once a month but never get put away for a long time. Happens all the time. That happens all the time. How about the Uso at the door game room? They get arrested or slap on the wrist like owners. They don't get arrested. The the Usos at the door, they're not going to get arrested. Because they just, they work there. You know what I mean? They're technically not in charge of the, the machines. Lucky Orphan said, choke mahalos bro, be safe. I appreciate you. So we got 18 in the chat on um, TikTok. So I appreciate you guys for coming out. Um, did you guys ever have problems with riots? No, we never had riot problems. But we always get, we always had like rallies and protests and stuff like that. We've had every kind of protest you can imagine. We've had like LGBTQ protests. We've had BLM protests. Uh, we've had anti-Trump protests. Like it, it gets pretty nuts anti-Obama protest when he was in office. And then 103 in the chat on YouTube. I appreciate you guys. Sorry I couldn't get to everybody's. Um, but come back. And we will address them. And they're going to stay up. I'm going to put the live chat on the video when this loads. It'll be about 24 hours. And uh, so all these will still be there. OG Dub says, can I drop your name if I get busted sometime? You could try. <laughs> you could try. It ain't going to do you much. Yes, yeah, going to tell police Doug is my friend. 
All right. Well, I appreciate you guys. Don't forget, if you want to come through the book with us, Sunny Sky Shady Characters, head on over to Patreon, sign up. It's not about the money. You can give the minimum. I think it's a dollar. It's just so that I can organize the content, give it just to the people that want to go through the book with me. We're going to do two chapters a week. And we got like 20 right now for this first class that we're going through. And we're going to do everything from Zoom calls to videos. And we'll do some group chat stuff. So if you guys are interested, you can. I do have um, links in the description of my videos to this book. You can buy it on Amazon. Just click on the link. It takes like a week. It's like 20 bucks. If you missed it, we start on Monday. We start in three days. So if you missed the first week without the book, no worries because we're going to go through it. You can just tag along with us. Anyway, I appreciate you guys. I got to go. I got to catch some sleep. It's five hours past you guys right now. I don't even know what time it is. But you guys have been a blast. I appreciate you. Thank you to all my Patreon subscribers. Thank you all my everybody that's in the chat right now on YouTube and on TikTok. It was a blast. Thank you for all the questions. I really had a blast. I really had fun. I'm glad I was able to hang out with you guys. You guys are awesome. And um, we'll catch you. Maybe I'll come in tomorrow. If you guys have anything that you want to talk about, make sure you send me DMs. And I'll do a live chat. I'll do a live stream about them, and we'll get into it. Okay? So until the next time, guys, thank you.